a statistical look at the idea of entropy. One of the best ways to do this is to imagine the dispersal of energy occurring from molecules actually dispersing into space. And that's fairly easy to envision for gas particles because we have a nice small particle model for gases. So let's start off imagining a situation where we have a box and the box is divided into two sides, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And we'll imagine there's only one gas particle in the box. And so we'll say there's one little particle. And, and the key idea is that this particle is in motion. And it's important to remember that for all molecular pictures that we have of matter, the particles are always in motion. They're either vibrating or moving around. Even atoms and solids can be translating, even if it's on very, very long time scales. So these molecules aren't fixed in space, but they can move. And so we want to ask a basic question, which is, where will we find the gas in the box? Is it going to be on the left-hand side of the particle, or the left-hand side of the box, or the right-hand side of the box? So since the particle is moving around, it's just exploring all possible spaces. And what we want to look at are snapshots in time. So these aren't fixed positions, but this is what any configuration might look like if we just took a snapshot in time. So one chance is that the particle is on the right-hand side of the box. And we can imagine that if we let it move around and we took a bunch of snapshots, a good fraction of the time, in fact exactly half of the time, we would discover the particle on the left-hand side of the box. And so with only one particle, these two are equally likely. That is, there's no reason to believe there'll be any difference between one particle on the left or one particle on the right. And so here we have a situation where we know if we wanted to know where is the particle, well, it's exploring the entire box. What happens, though, if we move on to two particles? If we have two particles, we now have two particles in the box, and they're moving at the same time. And so we can imagine them starting on the left. And then if they move around, and then we take a snapshot, we might capture them both on the left. But if they're moving around and we're taking snapshots in time, we know that there's some chance that we'll find one on the right and one on the left. Or alternatively, they might switch places, and the first particle might be on the left, and the second particle might be on the right. Or we might, in some snapshot in time, find them both on the right. Now, these possibilities are not no longer equal to one another. And the reason they're no longer equal is that the particles don't have labels. We don't know which one is number one and which one is number two. And for that reason, these two here in the middle are actually the same configuration. That is, we would call them equivalent. And so if we looked at all possibilities and we said, what are the chances the particles are both on the left-hand side? Or what are the chances the particles are both on the right-hand side? Or what are the chances that there's one on each side? It is more likely that there's one on each side because there's two equivalent ways to achieve that. Particle 1 can be on the left and particle 2 on the right, or 2 on the left and 1 on the right. As we increase the number of particles, we'll see that we get an ever-increasing number of equivalent states for different configurations. So let's look at what happens when we have four particles. If we have four particles, we now have to imagine there's some possibility that they could all show up on the left-hand side. But there's also a chance that one of them is on the right. And in fact, we know there's several ways to make this configuration. We could have the first particle there, or the second particle there, or the third particle there, or the fourth particle there. So we have four different ways to achieve that configuration with three on the left and one on the right. Could be that there's two on each side. It could be that there's more particles over on the right-hand side. What we want to do now is to count up the different ways that we can arrange the particles and arrive at these equivalent configurations. So for that first one, we know there's only one way to do that. All of the particles have to be on the left. We call this number of ways of achieving this configuration, we give it a symbol omega. This is the number of equivalent 
microstates. So these pictures that we're taking are microscopic states of the system. Where is the energy? How is it distributed? Where are the particles? How are they distributed? So for the first one, there's only one way to do that. All of the particles have to be on the left. But as I pointed out, for the second one, there's four ways to do that. Because any one of the four particles could be the one on the right. And since they don't have numbers or letters on them, they're all exactly the same, then there have to be four equivalent ways to do that. Turns out that for the middle, with the 50-50, there's six equivalent ways. And then for one on the left, there's four again. And all of them on the right, there's one again. So you can see now it's becoming ever more likely for us to be getting to this equally distributed. That is, that is the highest probability. So if the particles do whatever they want, and we just take a snapshot at a moment in time, the most likely picture that we get is this one here in the middle, because there are six different ways that we could arrive at that picture. However, it, it could be one of these other two. Those are equally likely. But these extremes are unlikely, because they're very special microstates. And so we see that the chances of them is decreasing rapidly. If we move up now to 10 particles, now we can see that the 50-50 states here, where we have 5 on the left and 5 on the right, are becoming incredibly likely. There is 252 equivalent ways to make this state, whereas everybody on one side or the other is highly unlikely. And in fact, only one on one side or two on one side is very unlikely. So now, what are the chances that we find things equally distributed? They're very, very high. What if we don't have one or two or four or 10 particles, but we have Avogadro's number of particles. If we have Avogadro's number of particles, it's extremely likely that we will get equally distributed particles. Because every particle on the left or every particle on the right has so small a chance of occurring that we can say it never happens. What will happen, let the particles go wherever they want, Imagine a snapshot in time. They are going to be spread out 50-50 on each side of the box. What is forcing them to do this? Nothing. The particles simply move where they would like to move. And the equally distributed case is simply statistically the most probable case. Does it have to be exactly 50-50? Half Avogadro's number on one side and half on the other? No. We can get some small fluctuations. But we never get these immense fluctuations where we see all the particles on one side and all the particles on the other. This number of equivalent microstates is a measure of the entropy. So this idea was formulated by Boltzmann, who said the entropy was equivalent to some proportionality constant. This is the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the number of equivalent microstates, omega. So if we have more volume in a system, there's more ways to arrange our particles. That makes for more microstates and more entropy. It's important to realize that these microstates are not just for arranging positions of molecules, but also how energy is distributed within the molecules and between the molecules. And so higher temperature will be more energy to distribute. More energy will be more microstates. More microstates will be more energy. Also, if we have more molecules in the system, more molecules means more microstates. More microstates means more entropy. And so all of these ideas play out that it is the number of equivalent microstates that we have, which is why some situations are higher in entropy. So let's look at a spontaneous change. Now, let's imagine that we have our gas, and it's confined to the left-hand side of our box because we put a wall there. And so it can't go anywhere. And so this starts at a lower entropy configuration because there are fewer equivalent microstates for that situation. But if I remove the wall now, 
I know what's going to happen is the gas will spread out because it's just randomly moving around. How will it end up? Most likely it will end up spread out 50-50. And that's because in the 50-50 configuration we have many equivalent microstates. So we go from a situation with few microstates, much lower entropy, to a situation with many, many microstates, much higher entropy. And this is the reason that we move from low entropy to high entropy. We're going from configurations which are less likely to occur to the configurations which are most likely to occur.